Hello, I'm Chris Jackson, and this is a Hawk Moment. This show will cover the history in and around Buffalo, New York. Today we'll be bringing you three different stories of history within our own Western New York area. We will be sharing you the story and history of Hilbert College. Then we will head to Love Canal up in Niagara Falls. But first we will go to the Buffalo and Erie County Naval Park, where I will tell you the story of the USS Sullivan. Come with us for for this tour of stories and background with a Hawk Moment in History. The Buffalo and Erie County Naval Park was formerly known as the Buffalo Naval Servicemen's Park. It is essentially a museum on the shoreline of Lake Erie in Buffalo, New York. There are three ships permanently moored in the Naval Park. There is the USS Croker, the USS Little Rock, and the USS The Sullivans. The Sullivans is a Fletcher-class destroyer that was commissioned on September 30th, 1943 during World War II and decommissioned in 1965. Sullivan, like other Fletcher class ships, is armed with five five inch guns, ten 40 millimeter guns, and seven 20 millimeter guns. She also carries ten torpedo tubes as well as depth charges. During World War II, she served in several key actions in the Pacific and earned nine battle stars. Her last action in World War II was in May of 1945, during a kamikaze raid that seriously crippled the aircraft carrier USS Enterprise. Her namesake, the five Sullivan brothers, was killed when their ship, USS Juno, was struck by a torpedo from a Japanese submarine. George Sullivan survived for five more days after the sinking, eventually succumbing to delirium and disappearing over the side of the ground. The Sullivan is one of four remaining Fletcher-class destroyers in the world. Our next stop on the tour, we will be visiting Love Canal in Niagara Falls. Back in the 1890s, a landowner by the name of William T. Love came to Niagara Falls with dreams of building a utopian metropolis. Unfortunately, things didn't pan out. A one kilometer long pit was all that was dug. This pit was bought by the city of Niagara Falls, who thought it would be an excellent idea to use it as a chemical waste dumping ground. After the dump was filled in, the Board of Education in Niagara Falls began building an elementary school on its ground and about 100 houses were built around it. This is 99th Street, or what's left of it. And it ends there. No trespassing. Ha, huh, good thing I'm in a car. The neighborhood of Love Canal has been completely abandoned for some time, and a chain link fence now encircles the containment area, which covers about 16 acres. In the late 1970s, residents discovered that black oily deposits were showing up in their basements. 
Pools of toxic waste started appearing around the 99th Street Elementary School, and kids began developing sicknesses. It was about where the 99th Street School was. Over that way somewhere. That was the epicenter. Upon learning that the neighborhood sat atop 21,000 tons of toxic waste, residents were outraged. They pressured local, state, and national authorities to get them out of Love Canal. They formed the Love Canal Homeowners Association, which was led by Lois Gibbs, a local mother. This is the spot where Lois Gibbs' house once stood. Her son, Michael, developed epilepsy after attending the school in September of 1977. That appears to be the remains of a lamp post, street light, shingles, lots of junk around here. These used to be cul-de-sacs right in here. Look at that. That used to be a cul-de-sac. So did that. This is absolutely surreal. I feel like for some reason, I'm not supposed to be here. This place is just creepy. Over 800 families eventually moved out of the Love Canal area. The waste was reburied at the site, and a new clay cap was put on. The events of Love Canal led to the birth of the Superfund Act, which was put in place to monitor waste disposal and prevent another Love Canal incident from happening. All that remains of this, the most notorious environmental disaster in U.S. history, are abandoned streets and a large open field covering the chemicals underneath. The last stop on our tour, we will be stopping by Hilbert College in Hamburg, New York. Hilbert College got its name from Mother Colette Hilbert, who was, in, who was the founding member of the Franciscan Sisters of St. Joseph in 1897. In 1957, the community founded a teacher training school for its members. In 1969, after expanding its curriculum to include degrees past what they were trained for, the institution became officially known as Hilbert College. Hilbert began to offer four-year degrees in 1992 and now offer 16 four-year degree programs. They offer one of the few computer security and information assurance programs in the country, and the first rehabilitation services programs in Western New York. After going down to the waterfront to learn about the USS The Sullivans, visiting Love Canal, where contamination took over, and visiting Hilbert College to discover how far it has come, we realized just how, you know, just how important history is. Whether it's Buffalo, New York, or the city you grew up in, it can teach you a lot about where you came from and what you have to look forward to in the future. This has been a Hawk Moment in History.